So I had this final performance in December of 2011. $30,000. Very close to. In, in 28 minutes. Damn. So it, was like, it was almost like $1,000 a minute. Did that make you want to stay? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you were on P-Valley. Yeah, the crazy thing about the Legends Ball is that all of us really did used to work together. Myself, Jocelyn, Tip Drill, and Jessica Don. We really? did all used to dance together. Yeah. How was I used that? to dance with a lot of I used to dance with Amber Rose. Wow. I used to dance with Drea. She don't like me though, but I used to dance with Drea. Okay. Now, why Drea don't like you? I don't know. I think I bullied her in the strip club back in the day. <laughs> Lip service has been going for eight years. L'Oreal's not there anymore at all, right? Angela and L'Oreal are no longer friends. Oh. And yeah, and um, they were like best friends. They did a good job yeah. of not making it a thing. I just want to know where did Gigi Maguire come from? The Little name. Wayne. Who came in there tipping two, three dollars? Michael Jordan. Oh, no. Damn. Michael Jordan? Michael Jordan. Shout out to my bro, Trey Songz. Yeah, I actually popped popcorn one time and watched him fuck my homegirl, and I was giving her pointers. Like, girl, point your toes. Watch that back, girl. Throw it. Yeah. Wait, that what? was pretty cool. <laughs> uh, word with me. Here you know BT. Sue so low. Shout out OCT. No real cap. Call out what we see. Whole game ready. Ball of blitz on three. No, you can't stand on it. on two feet. I already know you can't ball with me. Cause I brought up with the squad and me. They get a little, they call me. Ball alert. Ball alert. Ball alert. Ball alert. Welcome to the Ball Alert Show podcast, available everywhere you get your podcast. Please continue to like, subscribe, and share our YouTube page at Ball Alert TV. I go by the name of Ferrari Simmons. And I'm your bestie, Sue Solo. I go by name, you know BT. OCT, what that? Uh, big guest in the building, uh, Gigi McGuire. Hey. Did, did I say your last name correctly? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Do people mess it up sometimes? Yes, they do. What do they, they say? They give the McGuire. Mc like oh. with the C or the Mc Q. McGuire. It's McGuire. Like Jerry. Keep it cute. Yeah. I think Show me the money. money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now you're a professional, so you you're gonna be hosting the show with us, okay? Uh, I appreciate y'all having me. I'm so excited to be but here. But we're also gonna get in your business too. And I am an open book. So okay. Are you sure? Just in case you missed it. Congratulations to uh, Holly Bailey. Her movie Little Mermaid ranked in 117.5 million over the weekend. Let's get some snaps yeah. for that. Snap that out. We do snaps, GG. Oh, we do I'm snaps. The black superpower yeah. right there. Did anybody see the movie yet? I did. I did. Not. I oh, want to go. I want to actually go to the. And I don't go to the movies to see anything, but I definitely want to go to the movies to see that. I, I want to go into. I want to go and support crying. too. I was crying. 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 I just I love. A, I love a cry. good story, huh? I heard it is going to make you cry. Well, I, yeah, it, I love a good love story. So, how close you know. is it to the original? It's the same thing. Same thing. Okay. Oh, yeah, really? but black. Yes. You know. well, her, her boyfriend is white, right? Yeah, but it's it's more. <laughs> they have more mixed race in it. So the boyfriend is white, but his mom is black. And Damn. Mixed. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so, all right, Disney. I mean, it could. I mean, you know how Disney characters be. Yeah. You know, oh, when, back okay. when back when Brandy was Cinderella, they had an Asian. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know a love mean. interest. They're the trying mama. to really demonstrate that Inclusion. color ain't a thing no more. It's just but multiple then, versions of. And then humans. Ariel, Huge, her yes. sisters were different race. So one was Asian, one was white, one was. So they just mixing it all up. Mm -hmm. I like that because all those little kids that are going to see that, yes. you know, they're different races. And, you know, I've seen like a lot of uh, uh, black kids. Uh, at Disney and you know that's always dope to see because you know Hollywood don't think we can do those numbers representation matters and I love how like her entire cast the directors love her like there was a video of them gushing over her like just treating her like a queen that she is Amazing. I love it all around uh, did you guys see that or hear that Netflix is cracking down on the password sharing by charging $8 to add another user to your account I don't care I, just, I, I, I got my cousin password. He got to deal with so that. They're going to charge your cousin the eight dollars. <laughs> but he's going to cut you off. Is one no, I'm a cousin. I'm the one that everybody got my password, so I'm going to change my shit. Me too. Like, see, but you the cousin $8. with the money. You always got the cousin <laughs> with the money got to pay everybody nine dollars. <laughs> Gigi balling now. <laughs> if you think about it. If you if this if that's ten people, that's that's why the cousin who's balling hundred dollars. They got to pay for it. Oh wait, it's per additional person. Yes. Oh no. <laughs> Uh, Eight dollars a user. Gigi, like I'm cutting everybody off. I'm changing my password. Oh, oh my, that's my, messed that. up. My eight dollars is cool, but I'm or one eight dollars is all right. But damn, but Nicole, don't cut 10? me off, sis. Times ten, that's eighty dollars a month. Yeah. They want their money. Netflix hey, Junior, make sure you pay. Make sure you paying that Netflix. That's like a regular cable bill. Damn yeah. near, might as well be. My homegirl got me, her mama, her nephew, sister, all these folks, sis. That's eighty dollars a month. Please. Netflix tired of y'all. That's what's going Take on. Take care of me, girl. Take care of me. <laughs> Don't do me like Not that. Not only are they charging $8, but they also went up. 
Yeah, the, oh, the base yeah. Netflix is the yeah. base price. Yeah, it went up. But they are giving us good content. Don't don't knock nah, Netflix. No, don't justify it. They they come oh, yeah, out with some good movies. That. They but come I, out with some good movies. I did get all that on my uh, Disney Plus. So whoever I was sharing that, whoever password I have for that, I don't have Disney Plus no more, and I don't have Hulu anymore. Damn. And Damn. Hulu be having a lot of good black shows on there. Hulu has Franklin, the uh, Franklin uh, guy. What's Who? My, what's my show? Uh, oh, Snowfall. he's talking Snowfall. about Snowfall. Snowfall. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, Hulu got everything on it. With Netflix, y'all, y'all gotta come out with some old movies then, man. I be saying one yeah, movie come, come out, out once every yeah. four weeks. They need to come out with it more frequently. Well, what's going on that's mm -hmm. frequent right now? DJ Drama versus Meek Mill. Did you guys see that over the, Memorial Day? Not the Philly Bulls. Yeah. yeah it's getting, Bulls getting, is bulling. <laughs> so what did, is actually you from Philly? That's what I said there, yeah. What's happening? Did you happening? see what happened? So, did you saw what happened? I, I kind of saw, but it was something about... Um, it was a tweet first. Meek Mill did a tweet. Well, yeah, he didn't like, he didn't like Meek. What drama said. Yeah, yeah, he didn't like what drama was saying about Drake is like the Jay-Z's generation. Of this generation. Well, the Jay-Z of this generation. Yeah. yeah. But I heard they beefing over a female. Gigi, what's going yeah, on? What's what? going what on, Gigi? I'm, I'm asking you. <laughs> you gotta know. You're the connection. I it don't, it's not in my group holiday. chat. But listen, my ear is gonna be to the streets when I hit Philly on Thursday. So I might be able to get a little intel and get back to y'all on that one. Yeah. But um as far as Drake being the Jay-Z of this generation I, when I think of Jay-Z I think from the from the streets to the mm -hmm. stage yeah. and Drake we love you Arby but you've never been in the streets so I don't think that qualifies him in that way now rap you know numbers wise and then platinum selling and you know all of that mm -hmm. yeah but Jay-Z's story is that he was slinging rocks mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying he had them things in the trunk yeah Drake no but so, Meek was yeah. in the streets and Meek was in the streets I respect that. I think what I was thinking about... I don't know about, if I have them things in the trunk, but, but he from Aiden Burks. Oh, so. he ain't... And oh. that's, he from, that's the yeah, that's, that's the trenches. Mm. Okay. Yeah. The way I justified it was who was a bigger artist, like, globally. Like, Drake is, obviously, Definitely. that man globally. But if we're talking about the streets, I, I, I feel you. But I think he was just talking about who's the bigger Street artist. artist mm -hmm. Well, in that aspect. And I feel like DJ Drummer was entitled to his opinion. One time for Jay Hill, it was on his Definitely. podcast, it was my guy, friend of the show, and he said he grew up to Meek. So I feel like everyone's just to have their own opinion. I I do think some, it's something else going on. Yeah, because why saying. would Meek get mad at that? You can't get yeah. mad at something like that. It's something underlying it's something that we don't really know about. Yeah. And that kind of just triggered it. Because yeah, like, he also said, Drama also said that dreams and nightmares was oh, like, yeah. oh, yeah, so, oh, I want to so, rock. So yeah, that's what rock that. is like. I did see that. That's what Meek was saying. Meek was like, oh, Meek was like, you've yeah. been taking shots at me a lot lately, Drama. And but he what's, said for really for that on? particular year, do you think that uh, being a Philly native, that dreams and nightmares is you know under I want to rock? No. Dream I don't think Dreams and Nightmares is like Freeways What We Do. That will that song will never die. Oh my gosh, I love that song. That song will forever be a Philly anthem and that song will forever, no matter what city you in, wherever you at, what type of party it is, you put that on and everybody gonna go, oh, you know what I'm saying? Like it's one I of used them. to pray what for country? time like this. Because I be in yeah. like different countries and they Absolutely. play that in the whole I don't place. see people that now, I Wanna Rock is a good song. It's the, it's the song of the time right it's now. It's actually big. Very, it's huge. Very big. But I don't see that having the longevity that. Knocking off a. Of first of all, no shade, but there isn't any, there isn't any lyrics. It's just a, yeah. I Wanna Rock. I want to rap. Yeah. 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 Like there's it's no like verse. The song there's song. no verses. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. Mm. But I don't think that he was in this situation. I don't think he was talking about lyrically either. I think he was just talking about how big, big of a song, song it is. is. Like how big the reaction Currently, is to it. Currently, and guess what? Only time will tell. Because what we got That's like 15 years in with Dreams and Nightmares? Yeah. 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 I mean, it might not sure. it might not be one of those songs that is everlasting, timeless. Like it might not be that. But for right now in this moment, you really can't go nowhere without hearing that song. Very true. I mean, people still playing dreams and nightmares. Yep. But yeah, that's that's the only reason that I feel like me. I don't feel like dreams because it's like dreams and nightmares has paid its dues. It's, dreams as a and record. nightmares. Meek tried to retire it himself about five years ago, and it still ain't going nowhere. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> right. You that's can't just like a staple. That song. He it's tried. like what we do, like you said, with the free uh, freeway. What? That song is just that's that's Philly when I hear it. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Shout out to freeway. Well, I hope they can. Squash they, this uh, this little argument. I don't think they gonna be friends. I, I'm gonna be real. Well, with they're you. not friends. Clearly. I, but then, I thought, but I thought they were the friends at one point. Just leaked about the tiny desk performance and yeah, see, see, drama on red and you yeah. 
You saw all that? Yeah, I saw, yeah. I saw that on Twitter. That's that's a little extra. Okay, all right. Uh, Danny Lay uh, arrested for a <laughs> DUI in Miami. Ooh. Did you guys see yeah, that? I, I did. saw that. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> But uh, not only that, it's alleged that she was fleeing a oh, and, cr- and attempt a, to a flee crash. the crash. It was a hit and run. Yeah, I heard it wasn't no attempt. The girl fled. She tried to go as far away as she could and, and she dropped dragging time. the moped. Yeah, right? she dragged the moped oh for a block. So she hit. They said that she was swerving in and out of lanes. Finally, hit someone that was on a moped, dragged him for a block. Man. And supposedly, this person has is dealing with like spinal issues oh, now. Correct. She better they hope that she didn't die, paralyze him like he, he said. Be really bad. She better be glad he ain't died because he could have. Uh, or or paralyze. It's or really paralyze. bad. It's not, she finna yeah, have to good. cut that check. And she gonna do. She gonna do some time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she gonna be going to court for a long time for. That's at least what you say, like three years. I'd say yeah. so. Yeah. Well, Y'all was outside cutting up in Miami Memorial Day weekend, trying to drive drunk. Ride shares are too cheap. Miami, they was just celebrating, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, Miami Heat is going to the finals. I'm, I'm, Trying to get these tickets. These tickets are out of control, though. You called it. You said that they would be. Yeah. I'm a little nervous right now because we're playing Denver, <laughs> and I don't think we're going to beat them. But, you know, we're here. Oh, I'm, wow. I'm trying to try my best to get, get tickets. How to you going to say you hey, don't Robin. think y'all going to win? Hey, Robin, you know. Do what you, you do, Robin. Yeah. Right. Do do, Robin. <laughs> I know you got season tickets over there. I know you got a little something, something. This okay. is the first time you talked with some doubt. In oh, regards yeah, to your life, like, y'all, going y'all going to the well, finals and you going to say I don't lose. Sports, so hey, I'm just letting y'all know. We got, we, got a, we got a steep mountain to climb. Not the stuttering and scratching the back of your head. Yeah, Lord, who's going to pray for you? Yeah, yeah, the definitely, y'all definitely going to get swept. It's going to be tough. Oh, y'all going to get swept. Oh. Watch your mouth. Wow. Not Bring sweat. the broom out. Come on, right, what's next? Oh, God. All right, we got love versus money. Uh-oh. Yes. And Gigi is here. It's love versus money on the Baller Alert Show. Yes. Hey. So love versus money is I'm going to give a couple and then you let me know if they're there for the money or if it's love. Okay. So uh, today we have Tim and Bria Anderson. Who's Tim and Bria Anderson? Y'all know this story? No, I'm like, who uh, knows I'm, I'm familiar with this story. There was a side baby and the the woman who had his baby is claiming that they were really in a real relationship and mm. that his wife is only there for the look. Ooh. And they were going back and forth on Instagram, comparing notes and posting. And this the the, the woman who had his baby is she really came with a whole lot of receipts. Mm-hmm. Like they in selfies together, and he rubbing the belly, and it's like you know they like I a real right. They was together. Mm-hmm. I mean, they had a baby, so clearly yeah. they was together. He tripping, tripping, tripping. Okay, but if the woman who had the baby is saying that the wife is only there for is the only look. there for the look, then what is he in the marriage for? You can't just put it all on the wife saying you just do you just staying with him because it, it's a good look for you. Why is he still no, married to her? No, I think what she meant was that him having a wife was a better look for him professionally. Mm. So oh, that's yeah, that, why that happens like, all the time. Yeah. Mm. Well, now you got a side baby. Listen, I'm a side baby. I mean, it, the yeah. thing about it is, if he got married because it was a good look, like clearly he wasn't worried about sustaining that good look. Like he went, decided to be with someone else, he had a and good have a look, baby. and now he got a good little baby. So, okay. okay, okay. So you wasn't doing too much high enough what you was doing. If so that for was the, the love or for the money? Is the wife there for the love or for the money? Yeah, I think she might be there for the money mm. because why are you staying around if he clearly has this whole other relationship? That I feel wow. like she knew about. Love of the money. Oh, so. wow. Oh, I. Money. I'm going to say money. Well, if he's paying, she's staying. So I'm going to say <laughs> <laughs> she's there for the money. It's, it's all about the and, money. And I kind of feel like it's cheaper to keep her. Damn. Wow, so y'all don't think she loved this man? She probably did. That she's trying to look past the. Side baby. Do they have children together? Because that's a factor uh-huh. as well. They do. They yep. do? The, uh. the husband and wife do. I think she's there because she really loves this guy. What? Yeah. It I could be true. We don't I, know. I, it could be. I, I feel like it could be true that she really loves him and she's willing to look past. Cheating side doesn't stuff. always end a relationship, and sometimes having a side baby does not always end a relationship. So I think that's she loves this man. Yeah, that's that's true. But you you right. I cheap with a keeper. And he got a bag. Okay, uh, let's take a quick commercial <laughs> break. Well, look, baby, and we get so back. Uh, Gigi <laughs> McGuire's in the building. We're going to get in her business. And hopefully she gives us some, you know, some tales or two. about what Groupie tales. Y'all want that tea hot, huh? Baller alert. Hey, y'all. What's going on? You are tuned in to the Baller Alert Show. Period. Welcome back to the Baller Show podcast, available everywhere you get your podcast. Gigi McGuire is in the building. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Y'all see that hey, tea hey. over there? Philly. She said hot. <laughs> the building. Yes. Now, uh, shining. Mm-hmm. I've known, I've seen you from being on 
um, the show Angela E. Lip service. Lip service. Lip service. And I, I'm a big fan of the show, by the way. Y'all freaky um, as hell on that show, too. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, sex, the show is about hell. sex Lip and service. relationships. I love that That's show. That's the Lip premise service. of the show. I feel like y'all started y'all started the, the sex talk. I, I think so. I mean, we yeah. eight years in. Yeah, you guys were one of the first podcasts that I see, that I saw uh, on that type of yeah, that type of time. Now, mm-hmm. how did it start? Did wait, it... wait. Before we get there, we got okay. a whole, we got to go to Philly first. We got to know okay, a little bit, bit, more, mm-hmm. bit more about Gigi first. Okay. Uh, can you tell us the journey from Philly to Atlanta? Yeah. So, in a nutshell, I was a um, teenage mom. I had a, a baby at the age of seventeen. Five months later, I. Um, this is something I'm not proud of, but it's part of my truth. Um, I beat my mom with an ironing board and she kicked me out. And I ended up in my um, my fake brother's drug house. Not like the crack house where they're selling the drugs, but where they manufactured the drugs and kept the money. Okay. Like I ended up living there with my five month old baby. Um, from there, her daughter's, um, her father died uh, five days after her second birthday. Oh. I ended up becoming a drug mule. I went to Jamaica, there was only one trip. But I went to Jamaica and I swallowed 90 grams of heroin and I came back with 12 and a half pounds in a suitcase of weed. I got caught with the weed. I got arrested in JFK airport. I was processed through Rikers Island. My bail was paid. I was sent to some projects in um, Harlem and the lady, she was a Jamaican lady and she gave me, um, Annette, I'll never forget this lady. She gave me a plate of food, a blunt and some weird tea concoction. And she says, smoke, eat, drink. And when your stomach start bubbling, come wake me up. So I lay on her couch with a blanket and about, I don't know, sometime in the middle of the night, the stomach started bubbling. And she, <laughs> I woke her up and she gave me a Ziploc bag, a bucket and some gloves. And she said, as they come out, rinse them off and put them in the bag. And it took me all night long. The sun was up by the time I was done and two of them were cracked. So it was only a matter of time if one of them would have broken, I would have died. Fast forward to... I got that money and I thought that money would change my life. And how much was it? Five thousand oh, dollars. But okay. I was nineteen. This was in yeah. nineteen ninety nine. Five thousand dollars. Nineteen. That's a lot of yeah, money. Yeah, it was in two thousand. And I thought that lot, it would change so. my life. It didn't. Mm-hmm. So I ended up moving into my god sister's unfinished mildew musty basement. And um, how was your baby at this time? She's now three. Okay. And she does hair. And she has these clients that work at this prestigious gentleman's club in Philadelphia called Delilah's, which is like Cheetah here. Mm. And she's telling me, like, you should dance. Now, I have a dance background. Since the age of four, I've been on stage, tap, ballet, that whole thing. I went to a performing arts high school in Philadelphia. And I always thought that I would, I did. So I always thought that I would be like somebody's background dancer on tour with Janet Jackson or, Mm. you know, at the Grammys, at the performance. And, you know, this was always the life that I had projected for myself. Um, I did end up on stage and make a lot of money, but it just wasn't no stages. But anyway, um, so she's like, you should dance. And I'm like, no, I shouldn't. Because at the time, I'm very ignorant to the different levels of clubs. I think that every club is like a truck stop club or a hood rat club where these girls are sucking dick for $40 on the corner or fucking themselves on stage with Corona bottles. And I'm just like, I can't do that, (laughs) right? Um, Fast forward to I met a, a ball player who played for the Sixers at the time. And I remember... I, it, it played back in my head while we were at dinner, excuse me, that my sister was telling me about this club and she said that it's frequented by athletes. So I asked him about the club and he's like, what you know about it? And I'm like, somebody told me I should work there. He's like, you would do that? And I'm like, I never been, I don't know. You know. Where'd you meet the ball player at? Um, with a, so I used to hang out with this girl. So I used, to, I used to date this Jamaican drug dealer, like real big drug dealer in Philly and his sister, like play sister. I used to hang out with her. Oh. So she was like a little older than me and kind of like took me under her wing. And I used to think she was so fly. Like she always had like the latest and the greatest and she's body was banging. She drove an E-class Benz and I just always kind of looked up to her. Mm-hmm. So she kind of like took me under her wing and we was out hanging out one day and she introduced me to the, the ball player guy. Okay. So, um, we go to the club after dinner. And I'm jaw hits the floor. Not to interrupt you, but was the Jamaican girl working in the club? No. Oh, okay. okay. No, no, no. <laughs> so um, me and the ball player after dinner we go to the club, and I'm floored by what I see. So there's this one girl who's on stage, and she's giving like this great performance, like pole tricks. And me having a technical dance background, I can tell that she has one as well because she mm-hmm. really knew what she was doing. You had a real appreciation for it. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So he sees how I'm admiring this girl on stage, and he gives me money. I go to the stage to tip her, and it's my little cousin. Brandy. Girl. She had just turned 18 two weeks ago, and she had been working there since her 18th birthday. And we like, what you doing? And I'm like, I need a job. So 
That's how I started dancing. <laughs> did she put you on? She did. Okay. Yeah. Shout out to Brandy. Her name was Kat at Delilahs. So and now? and she was the one who told me, like, showed me the ropes. Like something about the strip club that most people don't know, that there's no training, there's no manual. It, it's 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 trial and error. Mm. You know, you live, you learn by doing. So that's why club. we go to a strip club and you see some girl, you're like, man, she can't dance. What's she doing here? <laughs> yeah. So you okay. and, so I've, <laughs> and I've worked at strip clubs for a while as a, a host and DJ. So usually the beginners are earlier on, right? And then the main girls come prime time. Yeah, I work day shift. They made me work day shift for 30 days. Mm -hmm. um, I, I was able to start working nights probably maybe three days prior to my 30 days. But um, I work day shift. So is there like a like a buddy system, like a stripper mentor, no, like someone who takes you thing. under your wing? No, absolutely not. You oh, on your own. They just let my cousin fall. help me. Yeah, okay. Right. And that's why I've always, in return, given that back because so she like help you I've with a name and everything. Did you have how a pickup do, line? Did she help you with a routine or not a routine? I thought I needed to learn a routine, but okay. I didn't need to How'd learn. You a learn routine. To Watching, watching, okay. and then you would get on stage and try. And then working in the daytime is like really nobody in there, so you well, can you have all the bloopers really. and all the practices, mm -hmm. all of that. Yeah. So um, I actually got fired from that club because I slashed a girl in her face with champagne glass. Damn. Rumor, rumor says it's a bottle, but it wasn't a bottle; it was a glass. Now, how did we get to that? What happened? We were arguing. First of all, the girl never liked me because allegedly I stole her boyfriend, but I didn't know he was your boyfriend. <laughs> I was going to ask that. How is the beef or the, the it's women? It's usually over men or money. Was the environment of women, how is that in the club? So everybody's hustling for the same dollar. So even though this your homegirl and y'all ride or die to the end, y'all still trying to get the same dollar. We and the girl that don't like you, she trying to get the same dollar too. So yeah. there's that dynamic. But as far as this particular girl, I came into the club and met a guy and we started dating. Allegedly, he used to date her. I had no idea. I didn't been, I ain't been here before. I don't know you or him. So we kind of was in the same circle and just didn't speak to each other because she didn't like me. Mm. So fast forward to, I don't know, a year or so later and um, we're arguing over something. I don't even remember what it was. But she's um, some type of Latino and she starts speaking Spanish to me. And I don't know Spanish, but these hands are international. Okay. So I had a glass <laughs> in my hand because I was fresh out the champagne yeah, yeah, room. Yeah, yeah. And, and I didn't drop the glass before I hit her. I still had the scar. I got hurt. She got hurt. I got fired. Come on, Mercedes. Are you still? Okay, so uh, I don't want to jump cities. Now, are we still in Philly? That was Do in Philly. How soon into the story is Magic City? What so, took you there? So that was in 2001. So I started in 2000. That was mid to March 2001. Um, I moved on to another club. Um, so you only did a year at Delilah's? A year, a year and three months. Okay. Yeah. So I started another club. Um, I was there for about two years. And then I decided that I wanted to bartend. So I went to bartending school. I left the club that I was at. I started bartending. I met a guy and we kicked it off. He became my boyfriend. Who's this guy? And then he tried to kill me. What? Wait, what? May he rest Sorry. in peace. Oh, okay. 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 Did you kill oh. him first? He had a heart attack while we was having sex. Oh, Wow. Wait. Okay. But he wait, was wait, like wait, wait, abusive wait. or something? Yeah. Okay. God Physically works in mysterious ways. Yeah. Lord Jesus. Okay. Now, is this, what happens after so this? So this is in Philly. This is in Philly. Yes. So, it, so it, it goes back and forth. So, um, I tried to break up with him. He was, he was abusive before I tried to break up with him. Hard to so say having sex. That's wow. a, a, I, I used that to try to get away. And mm. I left. And I came to Atlanta. It just so happened to be the day of Hurricane Katrina. Mm. Damn. And I came to Atlanta. It's pouring down torrential rains. I've never seen rain like this in my life. Um, I was coming to stay with a family member to sleep on the floor. I had my little Dodge Neon filled up with as much shit as I can fit in it. And I had zero plan. I wanted to bartend again, but I didn't have a plan. So the girl who I was with at the time, I came down with a, well, at the time she was a friend. And um, she had been working at Magic since the All-Star Weekend in like okay. 2003 yeah. or okay. two or whatever. Okay. So she was coming back and forth. And she kept trying to tell me like, you should come to Atlanta. I'm making so much money. But I was this. Because BMF was heavy I that time. That time. I was 110 pounds soaking wet in a cup. So and Atlanta I was like ass. very <laughs> intimidated nice. to come to Atlanta with her to work. Um, so I left and I came here and she... Her best friend was best. Her best friend's boyfriend was his best friend. Okay. So she told her best friend where he was at. Oh, her boyfriend told oh, wow. my ex or he whoever at the time. You. I was on Magic City stage. I'm gonna shit on myself. When I saw, saw that man walk in the door. I thought I was seeing a ghost. So it was a whole lot of back and forth. Mm -hmm. And um, so he, he passed away before you even moved moved down. back. Back? No. Okay. So the heart attack actually happened before. 
I left. Okay. But he had forever heart problems. The way he actually died, and this is like a... This is the real the real story because on lip service we kind of leave it there just for the cliffhanger. So gotcha. people really thought that man died in my vagina. He actually didn't. Yeah, that's, okay. what, I, that's what I thought. Right. <laughs> no. So he so now he has heart problems. He's on heart medication and blood thinners for the rest of his life, and he was in the streets. So fast forward to whatever he had going on, somebody put him in a trunk and pulled a gun out on him, and I guess he knew he was about to die. He had a heart attack. Mm. Oh wow. So they shot him and burned his body. So they found the body burned in the trunk. And everybody thought that he died from the gunshots and being burnt. But the autopsy report showed that he had a heart attack. So mm. his mother actually called me because when he had a heart attack and he ended up in ICU, I had to call his mom mm. okay. and tell her, Miss Denise, uh, Johnny in the hospital. And then when we got to the, I had to go pick her up and bring her to the hospital. And when we got there, he's laying in the bed with the uh, IVs in his arm and the heart monitors and his mouth all uh, crusty, looking oh, like Tyrone wow. Biggums. And we walk in the hotel, I mean, the hospital room, and he goes, Mom, look what she did to me. Like, <laughs> it was How funny. old was he? He was 31. I was 25. Yeah. So by the time you go from Philly to Atlanta, had you saved any money from dancing, in bartending? Philly? Yeah. No. You weren't, like, did you so make you money dancing? It as you did? Yeah. Yeah. It? I made money, but I was spending it. That fast yeah. money. Was yeah. um, the guy who was abusive, was he taking care of you too? He was helping. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I want to know about Atlanta when you came down here yes. and. Now, it's, well, she had to get you had ooh, to get your body ooh, done, though, ooh, right? I did. I'm yeah, about, I, I, well, yeah. That, where we going? That's okay. Where we going? So, what, what happened? When I came to Atlanta, literally the day of Hurricane Katrina, um, I ended up going into Magic City with my homegirl because she came to work. Mm -hmm. I came to figure out my life. She was trying to get some money, so I go into Magic with her, and I have the same jaw dropping moment that I had when I walked into Delilah's because mm -hmm. I it wasn't what I mean. I didn't know what to expect. But it just, it's something I had never saw before. Like, y'all know the vibes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so when you see that for the first time, and especially in 2005, you yeah. like, oh, shit. That was a different time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, I sat in the club for two days with her while she worked. And then they're having their amateur night contest. And um, shout out to DJ Nando. We love and miss you. Man, um, Nando, Nando was the DJ. And I guy. was convinced to do the amateur night contest, even though I was a nervous fucking wreck. And I told, I went into the DJ booth and I'm like, look, I can dance my ass off, but I don't know none of this music. So I don't know what I'm supposed to do, but <laughs> what would your advice be? So he was like, well, what do you dance when you dance? What did you dance to? And I'm like, Michael Jackson, Janet Jackson, Tina Marie, Prince. Girl, like, you will lie. I did ask. That's what y'all was well, tripping to? she said it was like Cheetah. Yeah, the it was like so Cheetah. that's white, it was like white club. Okay, you're right. Yeah. You're right. Lord okay. Jesus. So like, I get on stage and he played Wanna Be Starting Something. When I tell y'all I lost my mind So Big Magic actually came to me I won the Time contest Big Magic But before I even won Because they had They had me and the, some other girl Do kind of like a, a Dance off at the end And um, Before I even won Big Magic came to me And said who are you What's your name You live here You work You want a job You got a job You need a job Because I need you to do that On my stage every night And I'm like I used to dance But I haven't danced in two years And I bartend now He's like Dance in two years Not after what I just saw And I'm like eh. I'm like I want to bartend Can I have a bartender job And he's like No You want to dance He's like Think about it And if you decide to do it Let them know I hired you hmm. So I told my homegirl She's like Bitch if you You better Okay So now I'm dancing again So I'm back to working day shift Right <laughs> So I'm actually working In Magic City From 3 to 3 Monday through Saturday Because but, I have but That's still good though Because it's Atlanta right Yes Okay I have three. nobody here. Me and this girl actually fell out over her telling the boyfriend where, the best friend where I was oh at. Oh my gosh. And she went back to Philly and I'm sleeping on the floor at my cousin's apartment in Fairburn. Well, sure y'all know how far that is. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I'm literally, I have, I know nobody here. I have no friends. I have no nothing. I don't Wait, know my way around. When he, when he came back, did he take you or did, did you, did he just leave you be or? Oh, he waited out in the parking lot by my car and he literally, just by coincidence, I had on a pair of shoes that he bought me that night. And when I tell y'all, they were some um, Christian Dior mules, like wedges. When I tell y'all, he ripped them shoes out my feet while I was standing in them. <laughs> it was like a cartoon. Oh, you know how you damn. take the, you know how you take the table yeah, and yeah. Right. He did that to my shoes. Oh so my God. that caused a big fight. He stole my phone. I followed him to his hotel. It was like a big thing. And then um, I never spoke to him again. And then I got the call from one of my friends back home that they found his body and then I called his mom and then literally like I don't know a month or so later her, his mom called me back and told me that it was a heart attack did you get like a sigh of relief that you won't have to deal with him again or you had been had that I I had that from that last encounter okay mm -hmm. yeah okay now um 
may he rest in peace and I mean that. Yeah. Um, you know, he did hurt me in a lot of different ways, but hurt people hurt people. Yep. So yeah. in order to um, forget, you must forgive and move mm-hmm. on. So that's where I'm at with that. That's good. But anyway, fast forward to now, I'm back in Atlanta. Yes, and yes. Um, so the body. Yes. So I'm working day shift and I always wanted to get my breast done, even back when I was working at Delilah's and cheerleaders, because those, I always felt like the girls with the titties made the more money. Ain't nobody care about asses. But the girs with the titties up there made mm-hmm. the more money. And you know, I worked in the gentlemen's club, the Caucasian establishment. Mm-hmm. So, you know, white men like titties. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I actually had a sugar daddy back in 2004, maybe a year before I left. How, how did you acquire this sugar daddy? Oh, in the, in the club. Okay. They yeah. flooded with sugar daddies, yeah. I bet. Yeah. Was this your first sugar daddy? Um, This particular one? No. So no. You already he, was probably, was. he was probably, probably like number seven okay. by that time. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we talking four years in. <laughs> Number this, seven. This is, this, is a yeah. good, this is a good sugar daddy. Yeah, He's... yeah. So um, he gave me five thousand dollars cash okay. to buy some tits, and at the time I didn't have a car. Okay. So I'm like, hmm, do I want to get these cities done and still be taking a cab to work, or do I want to take this money and use it as a down payment with my little credit and get me a car? So I called him and I'm like, I'm going to use this money to get a car. I'm He's like, cool what happened you know, to your neon? That's how I got the neon. Oh, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that was the car I bought. That was oh, how yeah, I got the neon. You. Okay. Yeah. So I called them and I'm like, you know, I'm going to use this money for a car and I will eventually get my breast done. So working at Magic City, three to three, Monday through Thursday, Monday through Saturday for six weeks, I saved up 30 bands. Damn. By the time I went back to Atlanta, by the time I went back to Philly, it was my daughter's ninth birthday. I threw her a huge birthday party. Mm-hmm. I paid a down payment for a house here. Okay. Um, I got my titties done. I stayed in Philly for about two months, and then when I came back, I picked up my daughter and I brought her back with me because she was in um, she was in Maryland with my sister. At the okay. Time with my okay. Sister. So I came back, new titties with my kid, with all my shit in the U-Haul truck. Yes. Got a little crib, and now I'm settled in. So I'm thinking when I come back to Magic City that the titties is gonna get me. That ass ooh, 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 ooh. Nobody cared. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Welcome to the no, egg. Welcome to the egg. Nobody cared. They was like, how you coming nobody here cares. with some titties so, and listen, no ass? So even before I was about to leave the go, um, I told Mikey, y'all know Lil Madge. Mm-hmm. So I told Lil Madge, I'm like, I'm going to get my, I said, I'm going home to get my daughter and all of that, but I'm going to be going for a couple of months because I'm going to get my titties done. He said, why? I was like, yeah. because I want them. I've been wanting them for a long time. He's like, get your ass done. Don't get your titties done. Nobody's going to care. And he was right. Mm-hmm. So I came home and I thought that uh, the titties was going to matter and the titties didn't matter. So I got on the phone and I called my homegirl and I was like, what's the lady number? <laughs> Y'all know so what lady I'm talking shots. about. Yes, I did. I got to go see so the lady. I got to go how, see the, How much did these cost? Man, what's up with the table? I'm trying to lay on it. How much was the ass shots? <laughs> so it varies. So it all depends on how much you got mm-hmm. and, and what they're trying to do. With who you go to. Okay. Because okay. some people will give you $2,500 worth and some people will be like, I'm not doing that much at once. So oh, okay. at the time, I don't know what it is now, but at the time, the least amount you could do was like five hundred dollars. So my very first amount. time, I did the five hundred dollars, and then I want to say over the course of like eight nine years, I probably went about twelve to fifteen times. What your butt? And I was gets... always small. Like I'm still very small. Yeah, I just mm-hmm. got ass and titties down, but I'm still a very petite woman. So I didn't want to just go. And pop out with ass. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, it gradually, and I gained weight over it. And, you know, over time, you know, I added hips. And now I have, you know, okay. what we got going on here. And I, I've, I, since then, I'm I'm about to be on my third round of breast implants because I had my breast done again after that. I've had lipo twice. And um, why is this? It wasn't to your liking or you were trying to fit the, a mold or something. Your whole, like you said, the lipo and then you getting your breast done. Did okay. Something. So I hated my titties the first time. Okay. Um. They, so what people don't know about plastic surgery is the surgeons are not magicians, right? Correct. The, you can't take them a picture and say, I want to look mm-hmm. like this if you don't have that for them to work with. Okay. So basically all they do is enhance what you already have. Mm. So naturally with me being an A cup, I had a wide space in between my breasts. Yeah. So when I got my titties done, I still had this wide space in between my breasts and it looked like they just didn't get along. And I did not like that. So I kept them for five years and then I got them redone. And when I got them redone, the surgeon that I went to here, actually Dr. Jemison, Dr. J Curves. I went to him like before he was famous. Oh, J Curves, I remember. Oh, he's yeah. popping he's now. Yeah. yeah, so I went to J Curves and he actually closed me up. So now oh. I don't have that space and I love the breasts I have now. Okay. However, we're 13 years past that. Mm-hmm. And I, at 10 years, I got them 
examined. And um, the doctor at the time told me, as long as they don't bother you, don't bother them. They're in perfect shape. Don't worry about them. But in my mind, having this in my body for 13 years, I'm freaked the fuck out. So at this point, I plan to get them done sometime within the next two months. Um, and I actually have, um, you know, with with my grandeur of being Gigi McGuire, I get all of these perks and free I surgery is right. one of the perks. Mm -hmm. okay. So this okay. time around, I won't have to pay for them. Okay. The first pair I paid 7500 for, the second pair I paid 5000 for. So this time they're going to be free. And the same with the lipo. I recently just did lipo in December and that's because it was free. All first right. time I got lipo done, it was also free. But the first time I got lipo done, I only got it across the small of my back. And the reason being is because the silicone from my butt shots had rolled up and created like a, a roll across like my belt line here. And um, I was actually going to see the surgeon because I wanted to get fillers in my face. And he was like, well, if you have any fat that I can take, I can actually process that and it'll be a natural, a more natural filler than a radius or whatever, a juvederm. Um, but when he went to take the fat out, he's like, this ain't even fat, it's silicone. Oh, damn. So I couldn't use it. Do you have problems with your butt like most of these women are yes. facing right now? The problems I have, the number one problem I have is that I can't sit on hard surfaces for too long. It becomes to be uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. I can't really sleep on a hard mattress. Um, you know how you like sleep on one side? After a while, I'll have to switch to the mm -hmm. other side because it just creates a uncomfortable, not really pain, but an uncomfortable, almost like a numbness. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is smacking my ass, be gentle because mm -hmm. that smack echoes deeply. Mm -hmm. Like if I walk into a doorknob or a sharp corner, I feel like I got stabbed. Mm -hmm. So it's very sensitive. And um, in the beginning, I had some discoloration, but over the years that has kind of mellowed out. And the only problem I have right at this very moment is the very last time I went to get a touch up, which was in uh, 17, 2017. I don't know if the, the lady that I was going to, if she switched product or whatever, but that, the, whatever she used the last time, and now this is the reason why I'll never go again, is it my body encapsulated it. Mm -hmm. So in the spots where she touched me up, I now have lumps oh, wow. because my body attacked it and, and created like um, scar tissue around it. Mm -hmm. So like literally, like you can feel like before it was perfectly soft and everything was fine, but now there's like lumps on the sides. So. so with your butt and breast, let's say you get them both touched up. Are you going bigger, smaller, same size? So with my breasts, I'll probably stay within the same size. Um, the only way that I would go bigger is if the doctor recommended that based on the stretching of the skin. Um, as far as my butt is concerned, I'm not touching my butt no more. You would never get it taken out either, would you? If it was life-threatening. Okay. But even with like everything you just shared about it being uncomfortable, you, you can't sit on hard surfaces, you can't lay on one side, like that wouldn't encourage you to want to remove them? No. Ooh. I, Unless, been, I mean, it's been since 2006. So I'm used, just to it used to it now. Yeah. Like you can't take a long flight and I be can, comfortable. Okay. But I'll have to eventually stand up. Um, you can't sit on like a pillow or anything? I can. Okay. Yeah, that'll help. But it's it's mainly like, and when I say a long period of time, I don't mean just like two hours. Yeah. I mean like six, seven hours. Okay. You know, okay. eventually. So international I flight. So on an international flight, you're gonna get up and pee once or twice anyway. Yeah. Right. So, you okay. know, as long as I like relief for a few minutes then it's fine question yeah now you got got the, the body boobs, done. you got the the butt done now you're in magic city and of course we know back in back in this time frame the celebs are pouring through that motherfucker yes and what's the most money you have made in a night so on a regular schmegular any given monday saturday friday whatever night i would say probably seven eight nine thousand thousand okay what um on a birthday, you know how we had the birthday sets? Mm -hmm. Yep. 17,000, and my last dance was close to 30. Wow. Damn. Now, um, who's like your favorite favorite celebrity? Um. Did you have regular celebrities? I didn't have regular celebrities, but I will say that there was an appreciation, because y'all know the snack pack, right? Mm -hmm. That's why I was gonna go to the snack yeah. pack. Yeah, so there was an appreciation, there was a huge appreciation for the talent. So when you would have artists like um, Lloyd and Neo, who are also to Usher, they would appreciate our show mm -hmm. because they, the same way when I saw my cousin on stage, exactly. was my cousin. Yep. Like when you see somebody like, oh, they doing that. Oh, that's God given. Oh, okay. Then you appreciate that. For so, the people who don't know, what's the Snack Pack? So Snack Pack is Magic City's very first premier pole dance team or feature group. And I created that. How did that come about? 
So it started with Gigi and JoJo. There's a girl named Fierce who worked at Magic City, and me and her were like besties. And y'all know the rotation goes when you walk in, you sign, you walk in, you pay your bar fee, mm -hmm. and yep. there's a list, right? So they do one, two, three, four, five, first stage, one, two, three, four, five, second stage, right? Mm -hmm. General rotation. So me and Fierce were signing together, but then there was always a random three girls that we were on stage with. And we'd be on the stage doing all these crazy pole tricks and dropping into the splits and standing on our heads and doing all this shit. And they over there two-stepping, but we would have to split our money with them. Mm. So Mikey took heed of that and he snatched us out of that. And he was like, I'm gonna put y'all, I'm gonna separate y'all because I see the work that y'all put in and it's not fair that and it's, it, it almost got to the point where girls would want to sign up with us. Of course. Because they knew we was going to make money on stage. Yeah, right. they do less work and get right. a lot of money. So he separated us. He gave us 12 o'clock and 2 o'clock. Okay. And then that lasted for about a year or two. And then she decided that she wanted to go back to school and she wasn't going to dance anymore. So now I'm stuck in general pop by myself. And, <laughs> Girls in general pop. and I wasn't trying to do that. <laughs> so at the same time, there was an Onyx opening up in Philly. Mm. And Philly never had a big booty club before. Okay. Like they are little teeny hood clubs, but they never had like a big booty club where mm -hmm. the celeb celebrities is getting booked and is that bottles and sections and that whole thing. So this was new for Philly. So I ran my happy ass back home and got those trash bags off that stage for a good six, seven, eight months. And then when I came back, Mikey is like, well, while you were gone, there's a group of girls who have officially taken over the show. Now they don't get 12 and two, but they sign in together and they kind of do the whole pole tricks and everything. And he's like, if you want, I'll make y'all the new set. So I'm like, okay, cool. I fuck with them. Like I'm, I was friends with all of them. So I'm like, I'm rocking with that. Let's do that. So um, we went, <laughs> it's so corny. We wanted our name to be the NPA, the National Pole Association. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Cause he was the, you know, he was in the league, he was the pros, but that was whack. Um, and Esco, shout out to Esco, DJ Esco. Uh, Esco was Magic City's um, DJ. And they are, I'm very petite. I'm 5'5 five five and very petite, but they were all like 5'2 and under, 5'3 and under. So very bite sized. So he called us the snack pack. So he would be like, snack pack to the stage, snack pack mm -hmm. to the stage. And that just stuck. And now we're known as the snack pack. So um, I left Magic City in 2011. The snack pack continued on until each of them eventually left. Um, two of those girls are actually actresses on Peabody right now. Mm -hmm. And the other two, I'm not really sure because we weren't as close. So I don't really know where they are in the world. But Magic City has continued on with the cruise. Mm -hmm. So when you go to Magic City, you're going to see the girls doing the pole tricks and all of that. They still, a lot of them still do the pole tricks that we created with the wow. snack pack. So that part, when I go in there and I see that, I'll be like. Yeah, they be doing pull-ups, all type of stuff. It's not crazy. Yeah. You're really a legend in these streets, girl. Yes. It's amazing because I just be like, who, me? Yeah. Who, me? <laughs> but how do you go from, like, what's the transition between, like, getting your respect, your due respect from coming from the strip clubs to now being on po on podcasts, being a businesswoman? Like, was that a struggle to get that respect? Because I feel like we already know what happens in the strip club. Like, mm -hmm. It ain't just people coming to spending money throwing right. wands. Like they're right. probably demanding sex. They yeah. want sex from of, you. So how are you transitioning? I'm gonna be me no matter what. Which is why I wear my government name around my neck and diamonds. So people will always know no matter what, I'm gonna be coffee. Right? That's me. Gigi is the personality. Gigi is the go-getter. Gigi is who we all know and love for the theatrics and that whole thing. But I'm gonna always be genuine to who I know I am, and that's coffee. So with that being said, I my my respect is going to come because of what I get, mm -hmm. right? And I'm going to always give genuine. I'm going to always give mm -hmm. real. I'm going to always give honest. And people respect that. Yes. And what I did at Magic City or any club all over the world that I have been able to grace the stages of, it was work. That was a performance. I was sharing my talent. You know, I was being paid. I was on the job. Um, so as far as like bridging the two when it comes to respect in this new world that I am, I feel like it just comes natural mm -hmm. because I don't hide behind anything. I'm very up, up front and very forward with everything. I own everything I've said and done and people respect that in itself. And my my experiences and my stories are fucking just... yeah. I'm a fucking magician. I'm a superhero. This is your real life experience. Yeah. Speaking of those stories, can you give us a couple groupie tales? Who groupie were the cheap tippers? Ugh. Who came in there tipping two, three dollars? Michael Jordan. Oh, oh no. Damn. Michael Jordan? Michael Jordan. That's yes. Yes. He probably lost a bet that night. You know he a gambleholic. Michael Jordan. But I heard that he's not a big tipper in any aspect. Okay. 
Any cool little stories you can tell? Girl. I got so many stories. I don't know which I want to hear. Who spent the most money? Who spent the most money? Big Beach. Well, she wasn't there um, with Big Meech. She said after I was there after Meech. Mm. Well, I'm saying but after Meech. I want to say it was a group effort between like Jeezy, T.I., Gucci, um, what's this, Pac-Man Jones. Um, Neo? Uh, Neo didn't really spend, I wouldn't say the most. He did oh. spend, but I wouldn't put him at the top of the list of spenders. Okay. Um, it was it was mostly the the rappers and the athletes. Future. Uh, oh, and P. Future, yeah. But Future kind of came a little after the fact because Future wasn't Future when I was yeah, at Magic. Yeah, he was Let's go broke up. Future. Okay. Mm. Like the same way Jeezy, Nando broke Jeezy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What about so, Usher? Was he a big tipper? Yeah, what about the singers? Um, shout out to my bro, Trey Songs. You Trey have a Trey Songs song story? Always. Well, he's like my bro. Okay. Like, we're like this. We actually used to live together. And it was speculated that we were dating because I was always around him and I was always the only female on the crew, mm-hmm. but never anything like that between me and him. He just mm-hmm. used to fuck all my friends. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I actually popped popcorn one time and watched him fuck my homegirl and I was giving her pointers like, girl, point your toes, watch that back, girl, throw it. Yeah, Wait, that what? was pretty cool. <laughs> so y'all used to live together? Yeah. What was that like? Um, It was cool. So my cousin was his manager and that's how we met. And um, he decided that he would buy a house here after Trey recorded in the studio house here, um, Trey Day, which was his second album. Okay. Um, Delonte Murphy, I don't know if y'all know him, he's in the industry. Mm-hmm. So Delonte decided that he wanted to buy a house here and I was living in this little ranch house in Riverdale with my daughter. And I was always over there spending time at the mm-hmm. studio house. So when he decided he would buy a house here, he was gonna keep his condo in Jersey. He's like, you and the baby should move into my house so that way I can trust that somebody's there watching the house while I'm always traveling. And then since you always around anyway, you know, it'll be a better environment. You'll have help with the baby. So I'm like, okay, cool. So he bought this house off camp. Princeton Lakes, when Princeton Lakes first opened up back there, I literally watched them build the movie theater and the liquor store and all of that over there. So anyway, we moved into the house in Princeton Lakes and I had a room. My daughter had a room. Delonte had a room. Trey had a room. And then there was, he built the studio in the basement and that's where they filmed, um, recorded um, Passion, Playing and Pleasure and Ready. And then everybody will come through. So this is another, as far as like the respect and all yeah. of that. So back in my stripper days, I would be in the house and I'll use Drake for a reference. So the very first time I met Drake, he had came to the he had came to the house to um, record Replacement Girl with Trey Songz. And this the studio wasn't even in the basement yet. It was completely concrete. We had a stripper pole in the corner. And I sat down there the whole time with them. And while they were recording, I would just roll a blunt past it, roll a blunt past it, roll a blunt past it. So fast forward to like, I don't know, a year or two later, I'm in Dallas dancing and I see Drake and he's like, what? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, that's what I do. <laughs> and so that would, happen, that would happen a lot. It would be, I would meet somebody in that recording session mm-hmm. or at a studio or just hanging out with Trey. And then shout out to Clay, cause that's how I met Clay also. Um, Clay that just Clay Evans, Clay. yes, okay. yes, shout out to Clay. Um, Clay. May he rest in peace, I love that man. But. So I would meet people in that setting and then they would come in magic and then they would be throwing money and then they'd be like, I'd be like, remember me? Nobody was ever on the pole in the in the uh, studio? The way that worked is it came from the studio house and then they took it over there. So I would, instead of, so since Trey was filming, um, since he was recording and um, Nokio from Drew Hill was his A&R and he had a bunch of different um, producers that were always in the house. Troy Taylor, who eventually became my daughter's it's godfather. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we were dog. really close. We we're also like brother and sister. Um, they would all be in the house. So instead of them going out to the club, I would bring the club to them. Mm-hmm. So I would bring the girls to the house and okay. the Patron and the weed. Okay, okay. And that's what the stripper pole was for. Okay. Okay. But you were yeah. chilling, you weren't. No, yeah, dead, I, was, yeah. I was in the corner rolling blunts, mm-hmm. making drinks. So you left the strip club yes. eventually. And, and what, what, what year was that? 11. 11? Okay, so why did you leave? <sighs> yeah, love, I guess. Love, come on. Let's so talk about it. I started. You was in an eleven-year relationship with this guy. So I started dating a record executive who mm. shall remain nameless okay. while the mics are on. But we started dating, and um, he's a president of a very major label. Okay. So he has artists here, and you know he's from New York. So the culture here is like, oh, my bitch, record major city. She lit. But the culture there is like how your girl work. How your girl work at Major City? Like to them, I'm standing on, I'm standing outside Greyhound sucking dick. You get what I'm saying? Like that's how they look at it. We might as well be street walking, jumping mm. in and out of cars, the way that they look at dancing mm. in New York. Well, it's kind of changed over the years since like Starlets and that whole Bernice and that whole thing. Even though it was like more of the bartenders, but even still, dance 
strip doesn't get the same respect up north that it gets down south at all. It's a different culture. Too. Very different. Mm -hmm. Very different. So it just got to the point where any given Monday, one of his artists could come and make the city and see elbows and booty holes. You know what I'm saying? And he just wasn't feeling that. So he just talked me into quitting. And even though I was reluctant, I did. And I woke up the next day to a Platinum Amex. So then you had the last dance though. Yes. So what happened with that is I came in to have my very last Monday. So this was after we had this talk and I decided I was gonna quit. I got the Amex in my wallet. And I came into Magic City for my very last Monday. And I'm like, first things first, I came down to the office and I sat down with Mikey and I'm like, it's my last day. And he's like, why? And I'm like, I'm done. And he's like, but what? <laughs> like, what you about to do? And I'm like, you know, my guy isn't really feeling the vibes and out of respect to my relationship, I'm gonna transition into doing something else. So I had already been teaching at the time, pole dancing. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm like, I'm gonna just, you know, move on to open up dance studio. But for now, I'm gonna teach full time. I was teaching part time. Is how old were you? 31. Oh, okay. So he's like, you can't just leave. You're not the average dancer. Like you are Gigi. Like you just can't walk away. Like you gotta give the people something. You, you gotta got a lot give, of years left in you. Yeah, like you gotta give the, the family, the friends, the fans, you gotta give one final performance. Mm. So I'm like, all right, I'm gonna figure it out. Mind y'all, this was in June. This performance didn't happen until December. Because there were so many moving pieces that had to be worked out. The date, you know, birthday sets is a thing. They wouldn't give me a Monday. So it had to be on a Saturday. And I had a choreographer. I had celebrity drops. I had um, props. I had a whole music thing set production. up. It that was a full crazy. on production. We had practicing. I had it filmed for DVD. I sold 500 DVDs. And, right. and it was like a big thing. So I had this final performance in December of 2011. And when I tell y'all I left my soul on that stage, I left every ounce of strip that I thought I had left in me on it. That was like the performance that I always wanted to give because strip is always like titties, ass, bend over, split, pole trick, split, give me the money, right? I wanted to show that there can be production, there can be choreo, there can be entertain changing and there could be outfit swaps and so i wanted to give that that i had in me all of these years i wanted to give that and i, I did did your fiance wow. come to the show yeah he was there Love oh you. we never got married but yeah oh. he was there okay he did propose a couple times i said no but he was there <laughs> <laughs> now, it sounds like it was like real theatrical it but really, like it really was you know like a hood theatrical it, type it was of thing. that's exactly what it was so at this point are you still dancing to like mj and all no. the uh, <laughs> I, I had Speed it up and got with the time. Okay, so I, I speed up like, and got with the time. Turn, turn, turn like, up the future by then. <laughs> I was. I was. I was. I was. Like, Are you twerking I was. now? I was. Like, I was. So you didn't keep any of your uh, older uh, routines, and you. Didn't I did. Keep? Yeah. So you. So I did. I did. I even kept, the very first song on that set was want to be starting something. So what okay. I did with that performance is I took people on a journey of, from the beginning of my Magic City career. So what was the ending song then? Like what, what the ending it? song was Beyonce Dance for You. Okay. Oh, sexy. Very okay. sexy. I did outfit change. Okay. I had props. Oh, I had a chair. All the money by so then. um I recreated flash dance. Okay. So you know when she pulls a string and the water comes down. Mm -hmm. yeah. That was my finale. Except instead of water, it was two thousand ones and um iridescent confetti to make I it know, look that's right. You say you made thirty thousand dollars. Very close to. Close to thirty. Very close. That was, that's <laughs> in, in twenty eight minutes. Wow. Damn. So it was like it was almost like a thousand dollars a minute. Damn. Just about. Now, um, did that make you want to stay? <laughs> yeah, I wasn't. Honestly, honestly, I wasn't you know, I changed my mind. Listen, honestly, I wasn't ready to go. Mm, I'ma keep the platinum Amex. But I wasn't uh. ready to go. I wasn't ready to go. But what I did was, since I was a feature performer, so during this time, I was getting booked in Philly and DC and Baltimore and Memphis and all these different types of places um, to come be a feature performer. So I still continued to do that for about two years. Um, let's see. Yeah, up until October of 13, I continued to do features. So I still kind of had a little one foot in, in me. one foot out. But yeah, but then eventually it was all done. I had eventually moved to New York. And once I moved to New York to live with him, then all, all best was off. I couldn't dance at all. So when you get booked for a feature, is there like a guarantee? Do you get a booking fee plus yes, the tips? I was getting two bands, like, yes. two Gs, yeah. two Gs for Gigi. Yes, so it was $2,000 right. was my base rate um, plus travel. And then everything that I made on stage, I would keep. Now, this is also, you you have to stay in shape. 
So how was your dieting? So me personally, again, I'm very naturally petite. It's genetics. Okay. Um, but I was also raised to eat very healthy. Okay. Like my mom was like a herbalist. Like she, we, when we was kids, like I didn't have like fast food until I was in like middle school. Oh. Like we weren't allowed to eat like red meat and like like little little kids. We ate like like um, chocolate covered raisins and dried fruit mm. as snacks. Like we wasn't having candy and chips and all that. Like unless we were outside the house. Like inside the house, everything was very healthy. All of the the vegetables was fresh. All of our meals were cooked. Like we, my mother's house was everything happened at my mother's house. Every baby shower, every birthday party, every holiday. And when you was old enough to be able to chop an onion without chopping off your pinky, then you had to be in the kitchen cooking. So I kind of kept that going. So you kept that, I mean, you I kept you know that. I slipped and slide around the the food mm. you know board as a young adult. Um, but I always found myself back to where I am now. I don't eat, well, I, I do got a Chick-fil-A cup, but I promise y'all I only had a salad and it was because I was starving. Um, but um, I haven't had fast food in almost a decade. No, more than a decade. Almost 15 years at this so point. So basically you are naturally already... And let me tell you, pole dancing is the Keep best okay. workout a woman can do. Okay. It's core, it's cardio, it's full body. And I honestly wouldn't even know what to do in the gym besides walk on the treadmill. Yeah, so I was going to say, did you ever go to the gym? So you never went to the gym. What people don't understand is a lot of um, the weight loss and uh, the maintain is in your diet. So yeah, abs are made in the kitchen. Huh? Abs are made in the kitchen. Yeah, mm. but I was going to say you are aging gracefully and your skin yeah. is really beautiful. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm literally staring at your face like... Yeah, so listen, y'all, I just turned 44. You so, look wow. Wow. So we got some snaps for that. Snap, snap. <laughs> I just turned 44. I have a 26-year-old daughter. Wow. And July 11th... What's her name? What's her name? Kaya. Kaya. She's actually a director. Um, she went to film and photography school. Uh, she went to... School of Visual Arts in New York City for film and photography. Really proud of her. So very proud of her. She started a production company. So she's out here shooting like music videos for the little hood rappers. And, you know, she gets little jobs here and there when she does her thing. And I'm extremely proud of my child because, yeah. you know, everybody thought that she was going to end up walking in my footsteps mm. because I exposed her to so much. But that wasn't the case. She's the exact total opposite of me. Only thing I got to worry about her taking out my closet is my Jordans and my hoodies. Okay? <laughs> what was her feeling uh, or how was you guys' relationship throughout that entire time? With me being a dancer? Mm -hmm. So I always kept everything open. And I gradually fed her what I felt like she would understand. Mm -hmm. So I never hid the shoes, the money, the clothes, the late nights, the drinking. I never hid any of that from her. Okay. Um, I just explained it to her in a way that she would understand the order that she got. So again, my dance, technical dance background, I was a part of a dance troupe where we would get hired to do like hair shows and, and that type of thing back in Philly. And she, as a two year old, she would come to those practices with me. So it started with that. Mm -hmm. And then once I'm working in a club, it's like, mm -hmm. okay, now mommy has a job where she gets paid to dance at a club every night instead of doing random shows. And then it's like, okay, mommy's dance club is a little sexy. It's adults only, you know? And then I kind of gradually mm, yeah. like fed it in. But by the time she got to middle school here in Atlanta, and I'm Gigi McGuire, yeah. she lit. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She was driving to school in her little infinity. She was lit. Yeah. Now, can I ask my Angela Yee question now, guys? Can One I? second. Before we get off of this, I just want to know where did Gigi McGuire come from? The little name. Little Wayne. Oh. Surprisingly. He named you Gigi. He just Not really. So... I, Gigi, so I was ginger. Okay. And when I came to Magic City, they already had a ginger. And right. even though she wasn't actively working there anymore, she still had a valid permit. So they could not give me that name because as long as her permit was valid, she can come to work anytime mm -hmm. she wanted. So they were like, well, just switch it to something. And I'm like, switch it to what? <laughs> and they're like, Gigi. And I'm like, that's what we call my grandma. And they're like, so it'll be easy for you to remember. So I'm like, all right, cool. So, and they're like, well, you know, after her permit goes up, then you can switch it to gender. But I became so popular as Gigi that it just stuck. Mm. So years down the line, I have a little um, I don't know, adult friendship with Lil Wayne. Like we were never in a relationship, but we were friends. We're in a situation. A rendezvous. Yeah, we were cool. Rendezvous? I would, I would hang out on I would hang out on the tour bus a lot, Wayne's World. Okay. So um, here, here's your groupie tale. Okay. So I'm hanging out with Lil Wayne and we're on the tour bus. And we're listening to some unreleased music. And he's like, Weezy Maguire, show me the money. And I'm like, Gigi Maguire, show me the yes. money. And he's like, yo, that's fire. You should keep that. You should keep that. So um, it just so happened to be coming up on my birthday. This was in like 2007 or 8. And it was coming up on my birthday. And 
I've always been very theatrical, right? So I will always come with the ill themes and the and decorations and shit. I would decorate the whole club. So this year I did a Gigi versus Gigi Maguire, a spin on the whole Gemini thing. So Gigi was the girly girl in pink with the curly ponytails and the lollipop, lollipop was his song at the time. And the wow. lollipop with the tutu, right? And then Gigi Maguire was in the black power suit with the, with the silver briefcase, you know, looking real sophisticated. So I went with that whole thing and I introduced myself as Gigi Maguire and it really stuck That's from fine. that point. Like people respected me enough to go first name, last name with me. Okay. And I'm here for it. All right, Rory, I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> All right, so now, we're, how did you meet Angela Yee and then how did lip service start? Right. now... So Angela had lip service on Sirius XM prior to her getting her job at Power. Mm -hmm. So she had to kind of leave lip service in, to the wayside when she went to the Breakfast Club. Okay. Fast forward to when podcasts are becoming a thing. In 2014, she calls me and she's like, I'm about to bring lip service back as a podcast and I want you to host with me. He randomly calls you? Well, we were friends. Okay. Yeah. So Was you on? Did you make any appearances on her first show? I did. Okay. I came in I came in as a uh as a guest and we did a whole segment about Magic City. It was pretty cool. Um it was uh, when I first moved to New York, so around 2013. Okay. So the way that we met is she's really close friends with my ex. Yeah. The one who made you leave the club. Okay. Yeah. So they were close friends and okay. me and her created our own friendship and what? 15 years later, we still going strong. So um, lip service has been going for eight years. We won a Gracie a couple of years ago. Congratulations. And um, the, the, the co-hosts have been interchanging throughout the years. But I can proudly say that I have been the only co-host that has never left and has yeah. been consistent. Now, I might miss a couple episodes here and there because I live in Atlanta. <laughs> yeah. But um, but I've been the most cons I've been the only consistent co-host by her side for the entire time that it has been a podcast. Yeah. When I've watched or when I came on um, and started watching, it was you, uh, Angela, Stephanie and then L'Oreal. But um, but you were there before Stephanie and L'Oreal? Well, no, well, me and Stephanie came in together. Okay. But the reason why I can say that I'm the only consistent is because Stephanie left for a year, and that's how L'Oreal came about. Oh, L'Oreal okay. and Angela were very close friends at the time. Mm -hmm. And um, so L'Oreal would, in 2015, about a year after we started, I had moved from the house in New York with my ex, and I moved to Philly for a while. We broke up, and I moved to Philly, and I was managing a strip club there. So... Um, at this time, lip service was fairly new, and we would literally get the call like, "Can you come today? Can you come tomorrow?" So it was a lot of times when I couldn't make it. Mm -hmm. I have a full time Super job, yeah. you know. It was too last minute, and even though it was only an hour and a half drive from New York, I had obligations to uphold with my job. Right. So I couldn't always make lip service. So L'Oreal would sit in when I wasn't there. L'Oreal would sit in when Angela, when Stephanie wasn't there, and then um, Stephanie decided that she wanted to move to Los Angeles, and she stayed there for a full year. So during the time that Stephanie was living in LA, L'Oreal set in full time for that year. And when mm -hmm. Stephanie came back, there's now four of us. Okay, of us. yeah, because it was just three. Yeah, and that, it was three then originally. It became four. Then it became four. But okay. now it's just y'all replaced her with the other lady now because yeah. L'Oreal's not there anymore at all, right? No. Yeah, because L'Oreal's down here in Atlanta. Yes. Okay. What's that? Yeah. What, what's all that? <laughs> was it a bad breakup? And, yeah, it was. Angela and L'Oreal are no longer friends. Oh. And, yeah, and... Um, they were like best friends. They did a good job yeah. of not making it a thing. Because, I didn't you know, know it's, it's it's an inside thing. Okay. And, you know, I don't want to get into the details of it, but they are no longer friends. Um, we're still friends. But you and L'Oreal. No, mm -hmm, but okay. they're no longer friends. And mm. um, when people ask, because of course people ask, like, why isn't she on the show no more? I honestly just say that because she has a full-time radio job and because she has so many different podcasts, she had to just, you know, yeah. kind of sacrifice lip service. Mm -hmm. But it, the, the real truth is that they're not friends anymore. I would have never guessed it, never heard so anything when about we it. Came, so COVID, mm -hmm. so COVID, we were on Zoom. Yeah. And oh my God, they hated, I hated that. Zoom. They Me too. I was we like, man, these, on, on it doesn't oh give, it didn't don't give, give the energy. Yeah. Yeah. Now, home. what I liked about Zoom is that I didn't have to fly to New York. Yeah. Right, 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 right. All I had and to do was get up out my bed. Yeah, and, exactly. I All I had to do was get out my bed that. and throw a hat on. Yeah. And then, you know, we was rocking and rolling. Right. But um, so whatever happened between them happened during the time that we were shifting back from Zoom to in person. And L'Oreal just never made it back. But that's person. cool that it didn't affect your relationship or oh, no, any of that. Because Angela doesn't seem the type of person that's like, well, you got to choose. Because, like, she's even friends with you and her friend is the uh, ex-fiance. So she, you know, she yeah. seems cool. Yeah. That's dope. So, and then as far as um, Laura. 
is the Moore. new co- right is mm-hmm. the new co-host. So um, she's more like a permanent guest host. Okay, like she's a permanent there, guest host, but she's she's not a uh, she's not a a full officially time. full time yeah yeah but she'll yeah. sit in sometimes most of the time okay most of the time yeah because yeah, i've been seeing a lot of her yeah uh, on there yeah okay. shout out to laura Moore. we love laura yeah yeah why is she not permanent that's an angela question mm. i don't know so re- i just beyond show up poll, when i get the call okay. let's, move to, <laughs> let's move to beyond the poll real quick that yeah. was your re- reality show yeah. did that show get canceled yes well, it didn't get canceled, but We TV didn't pick us up for another season. Okay. So if the if if the creators of the show decide to find another outlet, then there will be. That was a, a deep three. show. Now it was some. I honestly believe that the timing was just off. Mm-hmm. You know, we did a COVID special that was kind of like the kickoff, and then when we did start filming the actual season, COVID was still kind of happening, so we had to um, test every other day and. All of the sets had to be closed, uh, yeah. and it just really didn't create what we could have created if everything was just like open and like if we were to do it now. It the synergy was off, big, like you just yeah, needed, I yeah. Guess. It was too much happening. Um, uh, the sto- as far as all of the storylines, everything was definitely um, real. Yeah, yeah, it seemed that everything way. was real. I don't like dime. That's not a. It's <laughs> <laughs> <This> not fake. <laughs> Just yeah. looked up like, me what? and Virgo are like besties. She's mm-hmm. one of my friends who we was part of Snap with, Pack. Sna- that yeah, is Snap a, Pack. she's on P Valley. Mm-hmm. Um, I love Lyric. I love Milk Marie. Me and Angel used to work at Magic City together as well. Okay. I love her. Um, I had just met um, Treasure, but mm-hmm. I like her as well. So yeah. Oh, and uh, how could I forget Empress? Oh my God. Yeah. With all the baby daddies and them damn cigarettes. <laughs> we thought that that was gonna be like the even production kind of like put her in the forefront because they thought that her story with, with the big it. daddies and her being Caucasian around all these black people and with all these black kids and smoking cigarettes while she was pregnant. Like they really mm. thought that they was going to be the thing to like blow the show up and nobody cared. <laughs> Are you interested in doing reality again? Like, is that something yes. you want to get into? So there is a show um, that is brewing right now that's mm-hmm. very similar to Beyond the Pole. Same concept. Um, I would say, and, and no shade to um, be on the pole because I love you all to death, but I would say from what they're giving me, it's like more... Creative freedom? You no, know, like the show in itself is kind of more like Real Housewives, less love and hip hop. Showing your growth. It's right. not just trying to be focused on something that's on, dark on and childish and, and drama. Yeah, and drama. So um, it's still in the production stages. I have um, confirmed that I will be a cast member. I'm just waiting on the call. I'm waiting on the contract. That's what I'm waiting on. Man, you got lip service. You got this new reality show. I'm waiting on the contract. Show. Is what I'm waiting on. So when the contract comes through, you know, I'm ready to sign. Okay. I enjoy doing reality TV because I've been on a few shows as a friend. I'm, I'm really, really close friends with Lala Anthony, so she had me on her show twice. Mm-hmm. And um, did I ever do Love and Hip Hop? No, no, I could have done Love and Hip Hop, but I didn't. Um, I don't think that's your style. But not only reality, you were on P Valley uh, at the. As um, myself. Yeah, at uh, Jocelyn had a party on yes. there. The and, Legends uh, Ball. The Legends Ball, yeah. Yes. So don't, the don't crazy thing about yourself, that, though. yeah, the crazy thing about the Legends Ball is that all of us really did used to work together. <gasps> Myself, Jocelyn, Tip Drill, and Jessica Don. We really? did all used to dance together. Yeah. How was I used that? to dance with a lot of I used to dance with Amber Rose. Really? Wow. I used to dance with Drea. She don't like me, though. But I used to dance with Drea. I used to dance with a lot of people. <laughs> were they the same people? Then, Back then, no. None you know? of us knew that we would be who we are today. Right. Okay. It's well, like I'm talking school. about like as far as their attitudes go and things of that nature. Was Jocelyn always like yes. on 10? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes, yes. Jocelyn was always Jocelyn. Now, okay. why Drea okay. don't like you? I don't know. Ask her. Lord have mercy. I don't know. I think I bullied her in the strip club back in the day. <laughs> um, but as far as people value is concerned, I don't know if y'all know this, but um, my Magic City career life has been loosely used, and I use the word loosely, very loosely, used as the muse for the storyline for Mercedes. That last season, boy, when Mercedes in that couple, so that that's a part of your story too? Well, no. Okay. But <laughs> but as far as her being the it girl in the club, as okay. far as her being the leader of the trilogy, as she, far Do you as, have a coach? Did you have a coach? Um, yeah. I, he wasn't a coach, but yeah, I had a, okay. yeah, I had a little thing happen. Um, as far as that, um, there's a lot of similarities. I have a daughter, she has a daughter, but I took my last dance money and I opened a pole dance, dance studio. 
But your mama didn't take that now, did no, she? No, my mama ain't take that. Okay. <laughs> Would you want to fault your mama like she did it when, when she I took mean, her I mean, I fought money? my mama when I was 17. Well, she, 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 she said it on top of the hour. <laughs> but um, fast forward to these to this time, if if my mom would have did that to me, I probably would have ended up in jail too. Because <laughs> how dare you? Yeah, that was crazy. We work hard for our money. Yeah. You just blatantly take it. Right. So what, what's, what's next for Gigi? So I want to open a restaurant. Ooh. In Atlanta? Yes. What's we'll the vibe? Mm-hmm. So, you know, like good feeling. I don't want to say soul food, right? But just like good food. Like I was good like, we got feeling, enough soul food in Atlanta. Good what feeling kind, what food. What's good food to you? Good feeling food. Food that just make you just, ooh, I what, need Whatever that. you eat, uh, selling, they probably need to eat it because your skin, <laughs> I'm telling you. Thank you. <laughs> they need to. Thank you. Um, so, again, going back to my mother. She passed away. It'll be six years in August of oh, pancreatic yeah. cancer. Thank mm -hmm. you. And my mother was like big mama. My mother was, there was always a warm place to sleep and a warm meal to eat. Mm. And her door was always open. To friends, I'm getting goosebumps. To friends, to family, to neighbors. You know, my mom's place, my mom's house was that place that you know always could come to. Yeah. yeah. And um, she was, uh, she took care of everybody. She was a caregiver. And I really feel like out of all of my sisters that I have that part of her in me. Mm -hmm. that I take care of everybody. I'm always, I will give you the shirt off my back and go home with my bra and I've done this. <laughs> like, you know, I'm, I will give you my last if I feel like you need it more than me. Excuse me. And um, when it comes to the cooking, my mom, and you know, everybody swear their mama could cook, right? <laughs> but my mom really got some serious recipes. Like down to the smallest thing, like devil eggs. Mm -hmm. My devil eggs are world wide renowned people bust my door down i got pictures of me holding the tray of double eggs at a party and two seconds later it's empty they were in line lined up for them fucking double eggs and it's because she always has the secret ingredient that she puts in everything and i'm i might tell y'all later but i ain't gonna tell y'all the mic but <laughs> so and 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 beyond her little like she always had her little thing that she did that makes something stand out or make it extra special mm -hmm. and beyond that beyond those little gems that i took from her the number one special ingredient is always love mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Food is not only nourishment, but it's a energy exchange. Yeah. So when you cook with love and you put those feelings inside your food and you serve people and you feed them and you feel that love in return, that's priceless. I so I want to create that type of environment for with this restaurant. I love it. And I want it to be, um, it'll be named after her, Bienta. I was going to ask that. Bienta. Mm -hmm. Bienta. You never heard that before, right? Nope. Mm -hmm. Exactly. No. So when you hear that, you're going to know what it is. So, I mean, she has so many, like, um, she would take, uh, we would call it bee juice. So she would take two, you know how the frozen Minute Maid juice come in a can yeah. and then you add water? Mm -hmm. So she would take two different flavors of those and mix them together with some fresh cut lemons and some sugar and it was the best fucking juice you ever had in your life. Again, we weren't raised on Kool-Aid. Mm -hmm. We weren't raised on soda. We weren't raised on Hawaiian punch. Like she would take um, uh, celestial tea, uh, herbal tea bags, mm -hmm. the different flavor, red zinger, lemon zinger, all those different flavors. And she would brew them and put fresh cut lemons in it and make a pitcher of like iced tea out wow. of that. Oh. And like, that's what I grew up on. So it'd be things like that. Her devil eggs, her, her potato. Oh my gosh, she got this sliced potato recipe. We used to have fish and potatoes every Friday night my entire life. Wow. So it's like things like that that mm. would be on the menu that mm. really just remind me of, of my mom and of home and of family. What advice would you give to young women who may be starting out like you and see you as like their life goal? I would like to tell people to save their money because that's the mistake that I made off rip that I wish I would not have. And not just if you're a dancer, if you are anything. The red bottoms, the Gucci bags, the diamonds, all of that will come in time. Save your money. And if you are going to spend your money, spend your money on experiences. I learned that traveling is therapeutic. That's like my favorite thing to do. Mm -hmm. I love to travel. I love to experience different places, different cultures. I want to go to an island and go off the resort and see how the people really mm -hmm. live in and experience the, mm -hmm. the home, really, the, the, the restaurants that are like, Culture. you know. Yeah, mm -hmm. like that whole thing. So I would say that. You want an like authentic literally. experience. Save your money and, and be honest with yourself. Be true to yourself. Be true to who you are. I don't know about in other places that I don't know where everybody is from, but in Philly, where I'm from, the one main problem I have with the people of Philadelphia is that they don't want to accept, they don't want to express their liking for something until everybody else likes it first. Mm. Like they're very like scared to express their feelings for things until they know what's the cool thing to do. Armani White just said that same thing. Really? Yes, and he's from Philly. See? He was saying that people do not like it until everybody, everybody else likes like it. it. And I don't like that about Philly. I'm going to tell y'all, when I went back in 2015, I had been gone for 10 years. And I went back in 2015, and I was literally depressed living there. 
I was supposed to stay for a year. I only lasted eight months. Wow. Because I was so sad at how my people, I had been gone for 10 years. I was on my third passport. My homegirls was, was still fucking the same niggas, still going to the same bar, still driving the same car, still had the same job, living the same house. I'm like, damn, y'all ain't did nothing in 10 years. They're just like stuck in this they, routine. They're just very comfortable like with just being content, just comfortable with being okay. I'm never comfortable with being okay. Mm -hmm. I, I, there's always bigger and better for me. There's always a brighter star that I'm reaching for. Yeah. And I just don't like that my people back home don't, have that mindset. I really wish that more people had the mindset of reaching for more and not settling for where they're, where they're comfortable at. Hmm. Hmm. Well, speaking of Philly, uh, it was just your birthday. Happy belated. Thank You're going you. Going back to Philly. Ruth yes, picnic. Ruth's and you, picnic. You got a celebration going on. I am. Yes, I am. I'm having a party. I haven't celebrated my birthday in Philly in eight years since I had that job at the strip club. So. Um, since the, the girls from Lip Service are going to be blessing the podcast stage yes. at the Ritz Picnic. And I usually do a group trip where I have all my friends fly out to an island or wherever for the weekend. And this year, I'm like, everybody just book a trip to Philly. Just we're book a ticket to Philly and yeah. we're going to take it home and we're going to party at home. I love so, that. Yeah. So we, well, we appreciate it's a, you. It's a work vacation for me. Okay. Work vacation for me. Yes. We appreciate you for joining us today on the Baller Little Show. Please feel free to come back anytime. I, I you appreciate y'all. Yes, I live here. If y'all ever need me to come sit in no, guest yeah. house. Yeah. You have an yeah. open Friends invitation. And you, yes. You I pull up and, you know, we can hang out. All I appreciate right. y'all. Before we get out of here, we got a pep talk with Gigi McGuire. Hey, y'all. It's me. Gigi McGuire, Miss Show Me The Money. And my pep talk would be to believe in yourself. My pep talk would be to know that you are enough, that you have what it takes, and to not ever doubt yourself or let anybody take your shine. Because guess what? You got it, and it's going to be all right. Follow